um, that uh, because Pastor Peter was here with us a couple weeks. Kent and Kent will con be in contact with Peter then and um, and then you'll get to see Peter preach uh, a couple three times during that time and so um, the two things that Peter loves most right preaching and one-on-one -on -one conversations with people so that's where um, where he's going to be um, helping all so um, let's embrace the journey together and let's remember to keep our heart and our eyes on the mission that we all share whether I'm standing in front or not um, and then I think one last announcement it is with sadness that I um, want to let you know that Dick Coots passed away last night and um, while that is sad it is a blessing he's been in a lot of pain lately um, there will be a memorial service for him, uh, but it most likely will not be until August or later, so it, it won't be immediately. Um, and Chris, uh, Dick's son, wants to make sure that you know that you all are invited. So anybody who wants to come to that, um, and so we'll make sure that that um, information gets out to you when that is set. And so for right now, keep Chris and Sarah, his wife, in your prayers as uh, they mourn Dick's passing. That's it for the announcements this morning. So I invite you, um, well, actually a special word of welcome to this big crew right over here. Um, you can't see them, sorry, online. You'll get to see them later. But um, we get the pleasure of baptizing Emily into the family of God this morning. And so welcome to all of you who are here for the baptism as well. With that then, um, I invite you to take a moment, close your eyes, if you, um, if you so desire, take a deep breath, um, but uh, give yourself this time while, while Chris plays um, to prepare your hearts and minds for worship.
Okay, Bill. I'm now on red. <laughs> Sorry. On the red microphone. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. You good? Okay. All right. Well, okay. So the, um, all of you who, anybody who's a sponsor or anything of Emily, come on up. Oh, yeah. You guys get to go, just go right around back here. There we go. All right, Everett, can you hold this for me? Okay, awesome. There, our fancy is doing that good. All right. So we come uh, this morning knowing that water is a common and a necessary part of our lives. We need water to live and to grow. And so it is a, a beautiful picture of God's hand on us in our faith journeys. And so um, as we come this morning to baptize Emily, um, I invite you all to join me in saying the words of our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed, and they will be found on the screen there. And you who are up front, feel free to look to the screens. <laughs> will you please join me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so I ask you, David and Ellen, is this the faith into which you wish Emily to be baptized? All right. So as you bring Emily to these waters today, then we ask you to make some promises um, on her behalf, and I ask not just David and Ellen, but all of you who are sponsors as well, will you promise to be a part of Christian community that can support you and Emily in her journey, where you can attend worship and take part in the Lord's Supper? Will you promise to teach her the Lord's Prayer and the Ten Commandments, the, the ABCs of our faith? Will you place in her hands the scriptures? Will you teach her the stories of our faith that she might know and grow into um, her own faith? Will you be an example of faithful followers for her? Not perfect, but faithful. I want to be able to do that. I'm sorry, but you know. <laughs> uh, but will you be faithful examples and followers um, of Jesus? Will you teach her to love God by loving God's creation and to serve God by loving and serving God's people? If so, say yes, and we ask God to help us. Help us. There you go. All right. All right. And so for those of you who are gathered here today in this community, family, friends, do you promise to David and Ellen and Emily and Everett to love on them, to encourage them, to support them, um, helping them grow in faith and in love and helping them keep the promises that they have made today? If so, say enthusiastically, we will. We will. Awesome. in the water. You can go ahead. It's okay. It's not, it's not even really that cold, is it? No, we tried to make it warm. Okay, Emily, are you going to come on down and let us get your hair wet? <laughs> yeah. She's like, I don't know. I want to. There you go. All right, Everett, you going to help? All right, Emily, Elsie, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is good. Emily Elsie, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. All right, well, we have a candle that um, we give Emily today, and we light it 
um, off of our, our altar candle here. And uh, it is a reminder for us that uh, Jesus gives us the command to, um, to let our light shine before others that they may see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. And, um, and so we give this to you. Everett, do you want to hang on to Emily's candle? There you go. Get really careful. There you go. Good job. And, um, and so we say to you guys, Ellen and David, um, light this candle most definitely every July 11th and tell Emily the story of her baptism, but also light it on any day when she needs to be reminded, or you do, that she is a child of God. And um, promise if you burn it down, we've got others just like it. Um, and we'll give you another one. But just use, have that out as a sign of God's love for her and for you. Will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the gift of life that you have given Emily. And we thank you that in the waters of baptism, she has been claimed as your child in this community. We pray for Ellen and David that you would give them everything they need to be faith-filled parents um, for Emily and Everett. And Lord, may there never be a day where Emily and Everett don't know your great love for them. And so in that, help us, Lord, as community that surrounds her um, and this family, that we would be shiners, shiners of your light and love into her life as well. We pray all this in your name and power, Jesus. Amen. All right, are you going to let me hold you? Come here. All right, so we'll do it this way. Will you please welcome your newest sister in Christ, Emily Elsie. <laughs> All right, you guys can go ahead and have a seat. One of the great gifts that we have as the people of God is the gift of God's peace. And so um, I say to you this morning, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Invite you, if you're here in the sanctuary, to stand and to walk around and share the peace with those who um, are around you. Please remember that the person that you're sharing peace with gets to decide how you share the peace with them. And if you are at home, I um, encourage you to share the peace with those of you that are in your um, home with you, but also take your phones out and share God's peace with some who are further away from you as well. Those of you who are, who are here in the sanctuary, I invite you to remain standing or to stand and uh, please join in singing This Is My Father's World.
be seated. Our scripture lesson for this morning, the first lesson comes from Psalm, um, Psalm 106. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Who can list the glorious miracles of the Lord? Who can ever praise him enough? There is joy for those who deal justly with others and always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come near and rescue me. Let me share in the prosperity of your chosen ones. Let me rejoice in the joy of your people. Let me praise you with those who are your heritage. Save us, O Lord, our God. Gather us back from among the nations so we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the God, the Lord of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. And then our second lesson for today is from Philippians chapter 4. And Paul writes, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends. For you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. Now I appeal to Eudoia and Syncyche, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they work hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of the joy of the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the lessons for today. I invite you to stand.
of looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians. Over the last seven weeks, we've been taking a look at that letter and, and how we can apply it to our lives today. And um, I thought it kind of fitting that today is our last day of Philippians and it is my last day to bring God's message to you just for about four months. I will be back, I promise. I'll be here, we'll be here next week for worship, but it's kids camp worship. And, uh, and so our, our children will be telling the message for the day. Um, please come and support them and, um, and find or just get a taste of the, um, the fun that we're going to have this week. And we often say for 51 weeks out of the year, we ask children to worship like adults. And one Sunday a year here, we ask adults to worship like children. And so I invite you to come and, uh, and worship with us uh, next week. But so today... I actually think there is no better way to go into sabbatical time for all of us than Paul's ideas and, okay, a few words of my own. As we look at the fourth chapter of Philippians, this is the last part of Paul's letter. And I invite you to take out your Bible on your phone or however you access the word. There are Bibles in the back if you would like them as well. Always encourage you to bring your own. Um, but And turn to, to Philippians chapter 4. Paul is setting out for the Philippians seven different ways to be joyful. Remember this whole letter in Philippians about how we can experience the joy of God in many different parts of our lives. And this one, Philippians 4, outlines some very specific things Paul asks. So chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Paul says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, Stay true to the Lord. I love that line. Stay true to the Lord. Not our own desires, just our wants, but to the Lord first and foremost. Put your relationship with Jesus first, front and center. And then Paul goes on and he in verse 2, he appeals to these two women. And he's like, please, because you belong to your, the Lord, settle your agreement verse 2. And he's like, and then he goes on in verse 3, and I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they've worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They've worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Paul is pointing out to us that Christian community is not going to be disagreement-free. 
Um, everyone isn't going to agree all the time. But he says, he calls us, he called the Philippians and he calls us today to settle our disagreements. There are leaders within the community, this community to help, just like there were in the Philippian community. And just because two people don't agree doesn't mean they aren't each working hard to proclaim the good news of Jesus. It just means we see things differently sometimes. Or sometimes we have a disagreement. It doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to disrupt um, the work of the mission of this place or of um, whatever place you are. Paul says to us, yes, you're going to disagree. Work it out. And then he goes on in verse 4. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. The best way to be filled with joy, the joy which comes from the Lord, is not by looking to the things of this world, but in your relationship with Jesus. Can't say it enough. If true joy is eluding you, not happiness, right? Happiness comes and goes with the circumstances of life. But joy is deep and abiding within us. And if you're having a hard time tapping into that, Paul directs us, look to Jesus. Not to solve the problem of today, but to be your peace and your assurance and your strength and your joy. And then in looking to Jesus, be like Jesus. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. We don't live as if the Lord is coming soon. We live as if the Lord might come someday, but not while we're alive. How might our lives change if we lived as if the Lord is coming soon? Well, then Paul goes on and he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And I love this because I read that, don't worry about anything. And I'm like, sure, right. Like, who? Are, why, none of us are free from worry, right? We all do it. And, but, and worry, by definition, though, is, is this. Giving way to anxiety or unease. Dwelling on our troubles. And Paul gives us an alternative to worry. He says, pray. Instead of just letting it worry and run around in your head, God, or Paul says, pray. Not to get God to do something that you want, but as a refocusing of our hearts and our minds, that when we dwell on God, on God's faithfulness and God's goodness and God's promises to be near, instead of dwelling on our troubles, it is there that we can then tap into joy. And when we do that, then we get to experience that peace that goes far, far, far beyond the understanding of any of us, right? Right? And then Paul points out this promise of God that his peace will guard our hearts and minds. Do you want to be joyful, F-U-L-L? -L? Then center your hearts in Jesus. And then Paul goes on, verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Fix our thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely, and admirable. You know what happens when we fix our thoughts on these things? We find these things. 
a few weeks ago, I pointed out one of my favorite books from C.S. Lewis is The Great Divorce, which is a, a story about um, a description of what heaven might be like. And in that story, there is a person who is always seeing the bad. Right, and there's that, and the woman reminds him, reminds the narrator of the story, you find what you are looking for. And so Paul says, think on these things, because then these are the things you will find. How we think is how we live. We like to think otherwise, but I think it's really true. How I think, what I think about things, drives the way I live. If I look for the worst, the bad, the troubles, then that's what I'll see. If we look for the best, the good, the blessing, that's what we'll see. Want to be full of joy? Look to things that bring joy. And then that's what you'll find. Not that the other will totally go away, but when we focus on the good, that's where our hearts will most likely stay. And be reassured and find that joy and find that peace. Paul's hope is that the Philippians would continue to seek after Jesus and his ways. Even if Paul could never return to them. But that he was praying that they would keep doing that. And in doing that, that they would find a way of life that was filled with joy. Joy that comes from God, not based on the things of this earth. Joy that comes from God and is based on who God is. My friends, Paul's hope for the Philippians is mine for you. Sabbatical time. Be starting in a week from tomorrow. Not that I'm counting days or anything. But sabbatical time starts. And, and many see this as a time where the pastor gets to take an extended vacation. And that where there's no one really in charge of this community, and, and, and at times and in places, um, there have been times when pastors have gone on sabbatical where someone decides to push through their own agenda. It's kind of like, okay, the pastor isn't here. Now's the time, right? That's not what sabbatical time is. Yes, I will be away from you for a time. And yes, I will be resting and reviving my soul, um, and letting go of the demands of day-in, day-out ministry for a season. I will be visiting friends I haven't seen in ages and being with family that I love. And I will be seeing parts of this beautiful country that I've never seen before. But this time also is a time away from the day-to-day -day demands so that I have time to really listen and to pray to think and process, how can I be the leader faith needs for the next season of life? To stop and listen and pray, to be still and quiet so I can hear Jesus and we can have conversation. And I'll tell you, even when I'm being still, I'm not really good at being still. So I'm going to be working on that. It is a time when I will be asking Jesus for vision for what's next for us here. But it is also a time for you all to continue to be faith. To seek to live out our mission of changing lives through the power of Jesus. Not just others' lives, but our own lives. It is a time to continue to support the council and the staff and the sabbatical team and other key leaders. Don't look for trouble. Don't make trouble. <laughs> support one another. Love one another. Look, listen, pray, seek what God is calling you to. This doesn't stop. All this that we are doesn't stop just because I'm not standing right here for a bit. I'm pretty sure that through all this time, God is still God. And that God is still wanting to work through me and through the community we call faith. You all. So I thought today then that I would end with my own letter to you. So someday this will be um, the book of Jane, chapter 1, <laughs> verse 1. Dear beloved faith. How I cherish you in my heart. How honored I am 
to be called your pastor. That God would call me here to journey with you has been and is one of the biggest blessings of my life. I treasure who we are and who we get to be and what we get to do together for the sake of shining Jesus' light and love into the world. My friends, keep up this great work. For this is not an end, but it is a new beginning. In a week, we will enter sabbatical time, a time when I will be physically away from you, but know this, I will carry you in my heart. I will be praying for you and that you will know the amazing joy of Jesus in this time as well. In these days and weeks apart, I pray we will each continue to follow Jesus' callings in our lives. I pray you and I will be open to the moving of the Spirit within us. During sabbatical time, my hope for you is that you will discover anew the gifts within you and each other. Look for the gifts God is bringing to the surface. Discover anew your own passions and gifts. Step into them. Use them. Live them. Come to know each other better. Look for God's love and presence in each one. Treat each other with love and respect. Think the best of each other. Look for the good in all. The first sermon series, While I Am Gone, is entitled, God Is. I pray you will listen carefully to the insights of your fellow brothers and sisters on the preaching team. For God, I believe, is speaking profoundly through them. Perhaps you'll hear anew the amazingness of our God and the message God is speaking. Uphold them in your hearts and prayers listen well, and then put their words and ideas into action. When you don't like something or question something, talk it out. Ask questions to understand. Don't gossip. Don't assume. Don't decide someone's reason for them. Ask, then listen. The leadership of faith has been planning and praying for this time for a long time time. Trust them. Reach out to each other. Care about others. Care for each other. Let others care about you and care for you. Don't discount an offer of help. Graciously accept and say thank you. Live generously. Give generously. Expect God to do amazing things, and then pay attention when God does. Share those stories with one another. Share them here in worship. Share them in the e-news and on teams. Share them with each other, for they are what build up and cast vision for what can be. Celebrate, rejoice, worship, pray together. Don't drop out until I return. If your coming is based solely on me, I love you, but your loyalty is in the wrong place. Don't let this be a time that is just about me. Let it be a time about you and Jesus and being this community together. Whether I am physically here with you or not, you our faith. And I believe Jesus has great desires to utilize the gifts and people here for the sake of love in our world, whether I am physically here or not. Don't lose sight of the higher calling we have to follow Jesus wherever, whenever he calls. Remember, Remember the power of God that took nothing and created a world filled with beauty and awe. The power of God who breathed creation into being, including you and me and all people. The power of God that rose Jesus from the grave 
is the power of God that resides in you. Let that power burn for you, then in you, and finally through you. Move mountains. Change hearts. Bless lives. See the good. Experience the joy. Don't deny it or ignore it. And when we come together again to once again share in this journey, listen to the call, follow the one who calls, it will be all the sweeter and joyful for the time apart. My friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shower you with his mercy and his grace. May the Lord call you ever closer to him during this time that you might be him in a world who desperately needs him. In the name and the power of the creator, savior, and spirit, amen. Will you please stand and join singing How Great Thou Art.
Well, that God who created all is the God who also calls us here. To a table that was created out of love and grace, a table of forgiveness, a table where our God meets us in bread and in wine. And he calls us to come from wherever we find ourselves in our lives today. Jesus calls us to this table to come and to taste and to see. And so for those of you who are online, I invite you to pick up your piece of bread and say with those of us, all of us, the words will be on the screen. Will you join me in saying the words um, of institution? On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread, gave thanks for it, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. And then I invite you online to pick up your wine or grape juice and for everyone to join, saying, after supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we come and as we remember, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated here in the sanctuary. For those of you who are online, I invite you then to commune each other in the space where you find yourself. And if there is someone with you who does not receive communion, I invite you to give them a word of blessing. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, um, ushers will help, but we will come down the center aisle. There'll be two stations here in the front where you will receive a piece of bread and then the wine or grape juice is in smaller cups in the trays. The grape juice is in the middle, the wine is around the outer. Um, and then you just take, partake of the wine and then there'll be a trash can at the end of each line. You just drop your used cup in there. This is also the time where we take our offering. And so as you come forward, you can just drop your offering in that basket. And please truly know that all are welcome at the table. Doesn't matter what your church background is if you don't have any at all. If you believe in the love of Jesus, if you desire his love in your life, we invite you to come this morning. My friends, I invite you to this table to eat, be eat and be fed with the bread of life. If you need gluten-free wafers, we do have them. Please just let us know.
Will you pray with me, please? God of grace and love, God of beauty and wonder and awe, thank you for the gift of your presence here with us, not just in this place, but in every moment of our lives. Help us see the world around us with your eyes. That, that church isn't something that we do just on Sunday morning, but it is who we are. 24-7, every morning, every night, every afternoon. And, and Lord, we know we're not going to get it right all the time. And don't let us get bow, bowed down by guilt or shame. But let us tap into the power that is you and to stand tall and to walk firmly again. To be the people who show up in others' lives when they're needed. To be the people who reach out a hand to those who are different from us and welcome. To be the people who see the good in each person and seek to empower that good for the sake of your kingdom. Lord, if, if we're a person today that we find ourselves in a place where just putting one foot in front of the other seems to be all we can do, remind us that you are there stepping with us. Remind us that there are those in this community and around us that long to walk with us. So give us the courage to reach out. Lord, we pray today for those who are sick in any way, physically, mentally, spiritually. Pour your healing power into them. We pray for our world and those who lead it. They would lead wisely and make decisions not based just on political gain, but on what is good for all. And Holy Spirit, there are going to be a hundred, almost 180 little ones here this week. Let this place be a place of grace and love and wild joy pouring into their lives. Holy Spirit, give us the strength that we need all the way to Friday. Give us the, give us the joy in serving and seeing eyes light up and hearts changed for your love. As we go from this place today, Holy Spirit, remind us that you go before us and you come behind us and you are the power within us. May we live that. Pray this in your name and power. Amen. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, will you please stand and receive the benediction for today. As we go from this place, let the majesty of the Father be the light by which you walk. May the compassion of the Son be the love by which you walk. And may the presence of the Spirit be the power by which you walk. Amen. To lose. I'm feeling qualified for what you're calling me to. And Lord, with your strength, I've got no excuse. Cause broken people are exactly who you use. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord, be my defense, so I can face my giant with confidence. You took a shepherd boy, you made him a king, so I'm gonna trust you and give you everything. I'll be a conqueror, cause you fight for me. Be a champion claiming your victory. 
can you face like Daniel in the lion's den? Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. I'm going to sing and shout and shake the walls. I won't stop until I see them fall. I'm going to stand out, step out when you call. Jesus, Jesus, I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the walls. I won't stop until I see them fall. I'm gonna stand out, step out when you call. Jesus, so give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense so I can face. With confidence. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. So I can face my giants with confidence. Go in peace and love and confidence to serve the Lord. Don't forget, if you can take, take two minutes and help us, we need to move all the chairs off to the sides. Thanks.